That is a huge brown snake. Do you want me to film? Do you want me to film? Yeah, if you want. That is like the biggest brown snake I've ever seen. Holy shit. He's going into the bag for me, eh? Oh my god. Holy shit! You're done. I'm marrying that name. That <laughs> that is the biggest brown snake I've ever hey, seen. Hey, you're gonna get free beers. <laughs> that is oh, huge. You got a tight knot on the end. Can I come down there? Yeah. <laughs> it looked big in the picture, but not that big. <laughs> It's okay. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> that is just the wow. Oh, Guys, I have no idea how much you just saw, how much excitement you saw in my face, my expressions, everything. But that snake, that Eastern brown snake is by far the largest eastern brown snake I've ever seen. The only one which even comes close is one I saw in Cairns a few years ago. I've never seen an eastern brown in Sydney this size. It was almost a coke can fat. It was like a python and long and big head. You don't normally get that with our eastern browns. Normally the browns you see in Sydney, excuse the wind by the way, normally the browns you see in Sydney they'll be three, four foot long but only one and a half fingers wide. This, this thing is just phenomenal. To be honest, I feel absolutely awful removing such a large snake from where it was hanging out. Don't mind me, forgot the scissors. Apparently he's been living in that area around the pub for about four years. They always see him and no one's ever been able to catch him. He disappears into the paddocks, comes out, lays on the road. It's a miracle he hasn't been run over. So I haven't come too far away, probably about one, one and a half K. So he's definitely still in his home range because I do not want anything to happen to a snake of this caliber. I want this snake to be able to continue to live and thrive and do what it's doing best along here on the Hawkesbury River. Hopefully he's not too agitated now and I can get him back out and we have another better look. We were having a look at him there but the dog came running down the stairs and that wouldn't have been a good story either way for either the dog or the snake. I'll try and get him out. I don't even think the video does justice. We'll try and get him out and then I'll send him down here. You've got the river which runs along that way. You've got more sort of wet grasslands. Over there you've got the real grasslands, farmlands where he's been eating. Probably other red bellies. Skinks. Skinks would be a snack for him. He could eat a big blue tongue, cleaning up all the rodents from the pub probably. Actually, that's probably exactly why he's so big. He's been eating all the rodents at the pub. Let's take this off so he doesn't shoot up my sleeve. You go there. Let's have a look, hopefully. Look at the size of the head on this thing. Sussing out what's going on. Back into the bag. And how is that for an eastern brown snake? It's probably probably five foot long, almost as thick as a Coke can. I'm trying to get him close to me so it's not distorting the length of this thing so you can see the genuine length. This is a large snake. I've got another foot of length out the back of my hand there so I'm not injuring him by holding the very end of the tail. And it is windy, but how is that? That's about as good as you get for an eastern brown snake. Second most venomous snake in the world. He does have quite a few injuries on him. This guy has been through the wars. He'd have ticks, he'd have battle wounds from other snakes. He is just an absolutely incredible example of our Australian wildlife. Look at that. Eastern brown snake. Wow. And look how plastic he is. He is docile. Wants nothing to do with me. 
I'm being calm, I'm not swinging him around like other pork chops on the internet. He's just chilling out doing his thing and he's ready to go home. And gorge straight down to the Hawkesbury River. Look at that, beautiful. You got more grasslands along here. There's going to be ample red bellies frogs for him to feed on. Back up that way goes to the more grassy farmlands where you got your Danfield and his rodents. Smaller brown snakes you can eat, blue tongue, and he's going to be sitting very, very pretty, living the absolute dream here on the banks of the Hawkesbury River. Now that is an absolute behemoth for a snake. So I want that snake to have its own video. So I'm gonna try and tack a few little things on the end of this to give it enough length and enough interest to create a video from that absolutely phenomenal Eastern Brown snake. But oh, what a rush guys. It's only the start of spring. So uh, hopefully I can chuck another two, three catches in here. Get us up around the 10 minute mark and um, Hopefully I'll see you on a bit of a warmer day where I don't need to wear the flannel. See you when I'm looking at you. Let's go. And guys, what an absolute cracker of an eastern brown snake that was. Now I just need to drum into you, if the thumbnail is what I think it's going to be, our snakes are not getting bigger. Brown snakes are not getting bigger. I just needed you lot to click on the bloody video and that mammoth of a snake deserves your clicks. It's not very often you come across a snake, especially an eastern brown snake of that caliber, especially in Sydney. An absolutely phenomenal snake and I hope he's still out there living his best life in his home territory. Now we're running a bit low on footage that we've got so I'm going to chuck in a diamond python from last season which I never got around to releasing in anything and then maybe a bit of a bushwalk at the end. So it's another little interesting story, a bit of a backstory onto the release. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that eastern brown snake part. Hopefully it was interesting enough for you just with a little catch and a little talk. But let's go ahead and jump into our beautiful Morelia Spilota Spilota, the diamond python. <laughs> Hey guys, now as you can see, we are back with another beautiful example of a diamond python. Now a very dark example and a very chunky one too, especially for the length of this animal. It is quite a chunky, robust snake. Now this snake was actually very, very lucky. Someone I knew actually found him. So this guy, he was trying to make his way through a chicken wire fence. And you wouldn't believe it, the fence was actually electrified as well. You may be able to see a bit of a lump around here. A little bit of a lump where the snake's a bit fatter. If I hold him like that, maybe, maybe not. And that is actually where he stuck his head through the fence and couldn't get much further. Yeah, he was stuck and then zap, zap, zap. And so lucky, so lucky this mate of mine was nearby and able to go, crap, there's a snake there, cut the fence get the snake free, message me, and to be honest, when they message me, they're already on their way straight down to North Richmond Vets, who just do the amazing, amazing work with these guys, and he couldn't have been in better hands. He had checks, x-rays, and everything in between. It was decided, after a little bit of care, he was ready to rock and roll. So I've had this guy for about a week, just to make sure nothing worse shows up. There is a little bit of swelling, but as we know with our previous diamond python, we can suck the swelling out, the fluid, and it just doesn't go away that's something that will heal over time and nothing me intervening can really help that that's just time that's just time that'll go away i'll get a little clip on my phone of that lump and bump there so you can have a close look and then i'll chuck him in the bag and we can run him back up the mountains now we have a look there you got the head skinny skinny and we go to a bit of a lump here and that's just where he got himself stuck in the fence there and didn't actually do himself too much of mischief because help was nearby. But yeah, if no one got him out, he potentially could have been stuck there for a long time, died in the heat, or a fox or wild dog could have come across that night and finished him off. So yeah, very, very lucky snake. He's gonna be over the moon to go back home. <laughs> Look at this. Where do you think you're going, buddy? Not up there. Ain't no way you're going home. All right, I better bag him up. So I've just pulled up with our mate here in the bag and this is obviously the fence he was stuck in. See the chicken wire type fencing? I don't really want to get zapped. But there's enough for him to get enough of his body through and then get stuck and then 
get zapped by that wire on the other side. Now it doesn't zap continually, it's sort of like a chook, however long way to chook, however long way to chook. But yeah, let's not get one anyway. <laughs> so we'll take him away from that fence. We still want to release him here because this is his home habitat. He knows where he is, what he wants to do. He was obviously coming from this way, trying to get through there. So we'll take him back over there because that's obviously where he's been living. So I don't want to put him down there and then he tries to get back this way. So. <laughs> Let's hope he's learned from his mistakes and we'll try find a spot for him. So this is looking the goods. I've come a little bit down the hill away from that fencing because there was a little bit more of it on the ground and the last thing we want is for him to just get stuck back in it. Um, so I'll just sort of send him into this undergrowth here. There's some dead trees. Good habitat, hopefully somewhere for him to find a spot for the winter because it is getting close to that time of the year. Yeah, let's set him free. is our big fella more than ready more than ready to go on his way and that's exactly what he's gonna do off you go buddy and he is flying through there how good is that there is no better feeling than being able to get these guys back home literally back home exactly where they came from and he's flying too, he is gone. He's moving like a brown snake. <laughs> yeah, and that is epic, guys. And yeah, I did want to show you guys that. And due to where this guy's release site is, I'm actually going to go and have a look to see if we can find any more snakes. Hopefully tiger snakes. There's lots of skinks at this place. There's red bellies. We'll see what we can find. It is a warm, warm summer, autumn. Summer, autumn. Summer, autumn. It's autumn. It is a warm autumn afternoon, the first month of autumn, and it's about, oh, it's 30 back home, probably 25 up the mountains here, so it may be a little bit warm to get any tiger snakes out basking. I maybe came a little bit too late in the afternoon, but we're five minutes away from this spot, so we'll go have a look. Worst case scenario, we'll definitely see Ulampris heat wally, which are super cool, or heat walleye, however you say it. They're super cool, funny little dudes, but... If we don't get a tiger snake, I'll go back there over the next few days to weeks and we'll try and get a tiger snake for you. But I'll see you down the road. So we are at my spot here. Ugh. No snake yet, but if I can reach it, bear with me. Ugh, what do we got? Some shed skin. Now I am no expert at IDing shed skin by any means, but I think that would definitely be tiger actually. I'd definitely go to tiger snake, so they are around. I apologise for the quiet talking to you. There's people actually everywhere here today because it is such a nice day. In Sydney, it is packed. When I've been here in the past, there hasn't been many people at all, but yeah, lots and lots of people today, which um, it may scare the snakes away. But as we saw, we got a snake skin, so we're on the right track. That wasn't here last time. Now we'll go down to where I saw my tiger snake last time. It was a very, very dark individual. Could be because he's such a high elevation in the mountains. He needs that dark coloration to warm up. Or he could have been in shed, or he's just like that. I don't think he'll be there today because with this sun, he would he'd heat up very very quickly in this kind of temperature. I'm gonna try and get down there. <laughs> and see the rockery everywhere. It's just absolutely perfect for snakes. I've already seen a couple of heat wally, but just little little ones. We'll see some bigger ones once we get down around the water features. Our first Ulampris heat wally. Not focusing the greatest. It's focusing, but not the greatest. I've had it focus a lot better in the past. I'll find a bigger individual to do a bit of a talk on with some brighter colours. Yeah, the yellow bellied water skink. This dude's just hanging out, soaking up some heat on the rock here. 
and he let me get very, very close to him. You can see the type of spot he's hanging out in, just by the water here. Ripper, ripper little spot. We'll try find a bigger individual somewhere and uh, I'll tell you guys a little bit more. I apologise, I'm back in the car, that was very short lived. I started feeling really crappy and I just had to get out of there, I had to get back up to the car and I'm gonna shoot home. I'm not giving up on this place. It, 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 it wasn't too much going on anyway. There was no snakes about. There wasn't even any watch out for snakes, snakes seen in this area signs, so I don't know. I'll shoot back up one morning when the temps are a bit cooler, it's a bit nicer, uh, and things will be out basking. There'll be a lot more water skinks around, and hopefully we'll find the snake that shed that skin. We'll be back in the gardens getting you guys some snakes and skinks and whatever else we can find. I apologize, but we're going back to the iron. And there we are guys, wrapped up for another week. I apologize if the video was a bit hip hoppy, jumping around. Some of the quality was a bit crappy there. The sound, the wind, oh, it's hard to deal with sometimes. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you appreciated the brown snake and was happy to see the diamond python survive. We've got some cracker stuff coming up, some really cool series. It really, really helped the other week when everyone liked and commented. So yeah, that was cracker. Any comments, any likes, any shares are just so very greatly appreciated. Let me know what you just want to see next week. I haven't done an enclosure or a feeding video for a little while, so I might jump into something like that. Yeah, enjoy the rest of your night and I'll see you next week.